Hi. Good morning. It's good to see everybody again today, although I can't actually see you, but let's just pretend. We're continuing our series on being connected, on abiding in Jesus, on loving one another, on bearing fruit in our community. And I want to start this morning by telling you a story, a story about uh, what's going on here in Fergus. The bridge, which is the church that I'm pastoring and a part of here in Fergus, we, um, for a number of years now, we've been doing these community meals. And uh, these community meals, we, we actually borrow space from a, another church in town that has uh, their own building. We don't have a building. And uh, every month on a Friday night, we gather about 80 people from the community. They're all folks who are kind of living on the edge, economically, socially, and we just serve them a, a big meal. It's a, it's a wonderful time. There's three other churches in town that do it the other three Friday nights of the month, and um, it's been a great ministry we've been cooperating in in the last four years. Well, when the pandemic started, um, those uh, communal meals that we invited people to, they needed to change. They needed to become delivered meals. And, uh, and so we worked with another church here in town, St. James Anglican, and uh, used their kitchen and uh, gathered more volunteers and uh, not only delivered meals on Friday nights, but on uh, Mondays and Wednesdays as well. And then, um, oh, maybe about six weeks ago or so, maybe four weeks ago, we started working with a, a restaurant on Tuesdays. Um, the bridge delivers meals uh, from the Red Door, downtown Fergus. They make about 80 meals, we pay them for them. And, uh, and we deliver them all over, all over Fergus to folks in need. And, uh, and then uh, starting about a week later, three weeks ago, um, with the real estate brokerage that I'm a part of, Edge Realty, I encouraged the, the brokers and agents there that we would uh, start delivering meals out of the brew house. So now we've, uh, we're working with a bunch of volunteers and donors and, uh, and uh, getting some meals out of the brew house every, uh, every Thursday. And so it's a pretty exciting thing. And uh, I wanted to start by telling you that story, but I'll get back to that story at the end. Today we're actually, um, we're actually looking at this concept called quieting yourself in order to hear God's voice. Quieting yourself in order to hear God's voice. So I'm standing here in a nice quiet field and we'll get to that in a minute. But we're going to be talking today about quieting yourself in order to hear God's voice. And I'm going to be suggesting, if you look back at this field over here, that, um, that if you want this field to be ready, uh, for uh, the, the crop that's going to be planted. Um, you want to make sure it's free of weeds, free of thorns. And so we're going to be looking at about 16 different kind of weeds that could get in the way of you having a quiet time to hear God's voice, uh, having an inner quiet to hear God's voice. And then we're going to replace those weeds with one star. And I'll tell you about that. But before we do that, I wanted to start by um, reading Romans 12 verse 2. Romans 12, verse 2 says, uh, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. That's a wonderful vo verse. And, and it just reminds me, you know, in this world, there's so much clutter. And in fact, I think this time of the pandemic, we're actually decluttering a bit. We're getting rid of some of the pattern of this world that we're used to, some of the running around and making ourselves too busy. And man, this pandemic might even be a training time for unhitching from some of the patterns of this world that we know are not healthy for us. And um, I think this Romans 12, 2 verse, uh, sort of the beginning of, of the last uh, five chapters of Romans where Paul starts to explain how to live because we've been saved by Jesus Christ. Um, I think this verse 2 of chapter 12, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, is just a great theme verse for today. Um, because we're getting rid of the pattern of this world and we're tuning in to God's mind to hear His voice and uh, let Him renew our minds. And so the point then is uh, to be quiet in order to hear God. Now we're standing out in a field, I'm out standing in my field. <laughs> I could say that as a realtor, I could say that as a pastor, but actually I'm literally standing in a field and, uh, and, um, and I wanted to, to read this parable to you. Jesus spoke in parables and I, I wanted to read this parable. Again, this is from Mark chapter 4. I'm going to be reading the first 20 verses. Again, 
Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching he said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he was scattering the seed, some fell among the pa along the path, and the birds came and ate it all up. Some fell on rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Then Jesus said, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. <laughs> I love when Jesus does that. He's inviting us to hear him. When he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving, ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to his disciples, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? This, this one's the most basic, Jesus is saying. The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seeds sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seeds sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop, some 30, some 60, some a hundred times what was sown. I, I love these parables of Jesus, the way that he, he wants to use the, the natural things of the world to just sort of teach about the kingdom of God, to invite people um, into this, this otherworldly but worldly um, reality of the kingdom of God. And so, just a bit of a recap, there's the, some of the seed goes on the path, Satan steals it. Um, we're not going to deal with that seed so much today. Uh, some of the seed goes into shallow soil. There's no root. And, and that's, that's probably not you and me this morning. So we're not even going to deal with that today. But some falls among the thorns and the weeds. It's not on bad soil, but it's among the thorns and the weeds. There are things growing there. But those things growing there, the things that are there in that good soil, the worries of life, the deceitfulness of wealth, the desire for other things, those things come in and choke out the word. I think that's our issue. That's our concern this morning. And so, so that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at the weeds, the thorns, the things that, that choke out the word that we could be hearing from God. And then there's good soil at the end. This is the goal. We're not there. Well, maybe some of us are there. Maybe some of us are there some of the time, and that's God's grace. But this is the goal, the, to be the good soil that, that hears the word, accepts it, and produces a crop. Remember Jesus talking about abiding? That we would bear fruit because we're abiding in him. We want to be that good soil. We want to be those branches abiding in the vine. So let's look at some of the weeds that can choke out hearing God's word. And there's 16 of them. I'm going to run through them rather quickly. And I'm just going to invite you as I run through, don't try to memorize all 16 don't, while you're listening now, try to write down all 16. You can go back and do that. What I want you to do as I list out these 16 and as I briefly talk about them is, is just ask God, God, which of these weeds are in my field? Which of these weeds are, are choking out my ability to hear your voice? My guess is after the sermon, you might have some weeding to do, and I invite you to do that because, because you're good soil. And God wants to plant something in you and do something beautiful and bear a crop. But you got to do some weeding. It's that time. So one weed is an unwillingness to hear God. Some people say, I, I, I'm willing to hear God, but he just never speaks to me. 
Well, God's not going to force his voice on you. You need to start with a willingness to say, speak, Lord. Like Samuel said, your servant is listening. So number one, maybe do you have an unwillingness? Uh, you haven't chosen to be willing to hear God. Another one would be an unwillingness to hear God before you know the whole cost. Like, hmm, not sure I want to hear his voice because he might tell me something I don't want to hear. Well, think about this. How many of us in the crowd today are married? And at the beginning of our marriages, we said something like to have or to hold for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. We didn't know the cost, and yet we committed. This is God Almighty. He invites you into an eternal relationship with him, and he wants to speak to you. So if your weed is that you don't want to hear his voice because you're not sure what he's going to say to you, you might want to pull that one out. Another is unconfessed sin. Psalm 66 verse 18 says, If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. If you've got some unconfessed sin in your life, I wouldn't expect to hear much from God except that he might be saying to you, Hey, buddy. Hey, my son, my child, my, my daughter. Confess that sin and be free. Or maybe you've got a, a lack of knowledge, a lack of experience. I remember the first time I heard God 25, 30 years ago. I didn't know he did that. I had a lack of knowledge. I had a lack of experience. I, I hadn't sort of stepped in like the first time I went swimming and, and just tried the water. So maybe you got a lack of experience. You got to pull that out, a lack of knowledge. You got to step into this. Or maybe you've got straight up unbelief. God can't talk to me because he's not even real. Yeah, some of us have that. Some of us believe in the church. Some of us believe in, in faith. But, but, unbelief in God himself as a living being who's present and active and, and in whom we live and move and have our being. If that's you, you've got to pull out that weed of unbelief. Or maybe you have a, a fear of church chaos. Some churches actually discourage people from listening to God because you never know where that's going to lead. He might call us to sell our building. He might call us to hire more staff. He might call us to plant another church. He might call us to all kinds. Don't listen. We're, we got a good thing going. Some actually discourage hearing God. Maybe there's a fear of church chaos. Or, or maybe, maybe you like having God in your life, but, but not actually as a friend. Maybe more like one of those Facebook friends that you sort of add to your list, but you never communicate to them. Their birthday comes by. You don't even wish them a happy birthday. Maybe you don't even want God's friendship. If that's your issue, you want to pull that weed out. Or maybe you're too busy, too busy in your calendar, too busy inside. You got an inner freneticism. Ask God what that busyness about is and, and invite him to take that busy away. Force yourself to just sit for 15 minutes in quiet. And if you can't do that, you might have an, an inner busyness that you got to deal with. These are the first eight weeds. A ninth weed is you go to prayer. You want God to talk, but then you do all the talking. Maybe you do that in conversation too, where you, you want to get every word in edgewise and, and God couldn't talk to you if he tried because you're talking, you're not listening. Or maybe you're impatient. <laughs> Think of Moses in Exodus 24. Six days, six days. Like that's, what is that? 144 hours, there was a cloud, presence of God. And on the seventh day, God spoke. Some of us are impatient for God to speak. We give him 15 minutes in the morning and go, huh, didn't show up again. What would you do with six days or a month or a year? Don't be impatient. Practice patience. Or maybe you, you don't fear God, you actually fear people. You're more concerned about what people are saying about you than what God wants to say to you. You're preoccupied and your, your mental activity is all about, hey, I wonder what everybody else is thinking instead of wondering, I wonder what God is saying. Or maybe it's just the work of Satan. Satan wants to distract us. He wants to distort us. He wants us to believe that, that God doesn't speak. He wants us to believe that this, this ground of our life is going to be forever brown and God doesn't want to grow anything in it in the first place. Satan wants to do that. Beware of Satan. He's a loser, but he's not powerless yet. Or maybe you're asking the wrong questions. 
you're asking questions that have to do with your own desires and you know what how does it go your will be done on earth as it is in heaven maybe you're asking questions that have to do with your will instead of god's will maybe you're asking the wrong questions or maybe you have a fear of confusing your voice with god's voice and you, and you picture god as this this angry demanding particular god who he's he's going to strike you down if you mess this up maybe you got a fear about confusion last two maybe you're sent one of those people that says i would listen if god would speak to me but i'm just waiting for a lightning bolt and or a thunder and uh and he never speaks well you know the stories god often speaks in whispers in whispers God often comes to you in the middle of the night in dreams. Think of Joseph. Think of Samuel laying there in bed. Don't wait for the lightning bolt. He might be speaking to you in a whisper. And the 16th one, maybe you've just got straight up fear and anxiety. Maybe your picture of God is so distorted that he's this this distant, demanding bully. And you're just afraid of him. You're just anxious about hearing his voice. What if, what if he calls you to move to Africa? What if he wants to wreck your life? Why would God want to wreck the life of one of the children that he loves? That's just not God. Do not be anxious about anything but in everything. By prayer and petition, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Those are 16 weeds. And those weeds don't belong in your life. But you know what does belong in your life? Hearing God's voice. And so you need to quiet yourself by getting rid of those weeds and by holding on to a star. Now, let me tell you what I mean by a star. I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about reaching up into the sky and grabbing a, a star up there. I'm talking about S-T-A-R. I'm talking about a practice that I do all the time. You can do any time. You can do it when you're driving. You can do it when you're standing in line at the bank. You can do it when you're um, walking down the road. You can do it while you're um, waiting for somebody. You can do it in two minutes. You can do it in 10 minutes. You can do it in half an hour. You can do it anytime, anywhere. Star. You want to hear God's voice? S. Stop. Stop whatever you're doing. Discontinue your mental activity that's attached to whatever you're doing. Stop physically doing what you're doing. And just, just create a stop. A break. This is time for hearing God. S is stop. T is take a breath. A lot of people are dealing with anxiety during this whole pandemic and they're learning about the importance of breathing. And a lot of doctors will talk to you about this sort of thing, but it's also a devotional exercise too. Just take a breath. breathe in. When God created you, he, he breathed his breath into you. <laughs> when the Holy Spirit was poured out, you know what, you know what the Spirit is called? Pneuma. Pneuma. You know what pneuma is? Breath. <laughs> so take a breath. Having taken a breath, S for stop, T for take a breath, a is appreciate the presence of God. You know where God is? Right here. Right where I am. He's here in this field with me right now. He's, he's there at home with you right now. He was there with you this morning when you woke up. And he's going to be with you all day long. Appreciate his presence. You can do this in any moment. He's always present with you. Wow, if he's present with me, 
he could speak to me. If I've stopped and taken a breath, and I'm now appreciating his presence, I'm are ready to receive. Receive whatever he wants to tell you. Receive uh, the emotion that he gives you, the picture, whatever he draws to your attention. He just drew uh, to my attention in that moment the, the singing of a bird. It was beautiful. The heavens declare the glory of God. God's here. You remove the weeds and you grab a star. Stop. Take a breath. Appreciate God's presence and be ready to receive. God wants to speak to you. I want to get back to that story. <laughs> that story here in Fergus about these meals. I, I got to tell you about it because, you know, it didn't just kind of come out of nowhere. So I told you we've been doing these meals for a number of months and over a number of years, actually, uh, the, the the community meals at, at the church at Melville United. And um, and then about five and a half weeks ago, six weeks ago, um, Carol and I, my wife and I, were in a, a, a World Renew and Diaconal Ministries Canada Saturday workshop about how to respond to the pandemic in these challenging times. And we heard about a grant program. Uh, they were going to be giving grants to churches who came up with creative ideas to respond in their community um, to the needs that the pandemic is bringing. And I had lots of ideas. I've never been short of ideas. But what we did at the bridge was on a, that Sunday morning, the next day, we, we sat in prayer on, on Zoom, of course, and we, we listened to God. I told them about the opportunity, $5,000, what should we do? And we listened. And, um, and God spoke. And he didn't say, hey, go partner with the Red Door and the brew house. Um, but he said these two things. He said, do something in line with what you're already doing. Don't start something entirely new. Do, do something in line with what you're already doing. This is continuous with what you've already been doing. And secondly, he said, Connect with organizations that already exist. Don't start something new. So those are the two words from God that we got. And I didn't get those. Those were members of the bridge that got those. And we shared them and we heard them together. And they shared them and we received them as God's rhema, his words for us. And then it was just a matter of putting that together with the opportunity to connect with the community meals, meals to go in Center Wellington, to notice, because we care and love, care about and love our neighbors, to notice the business people that were struggling, we're, we're concerned about our restaurants here in Fergus, and to put together this idea and then to test it, to go to some restaurants and see if it would work, to go to the CW Meals team and say, hey, would this work? And lo and behold, God opened the doors and he put it all together and World Renew accepted uh, and approved our grant application and we raised some funds ourselves and then we used our story to encourage other businesses and other churches and and St. Andrew's Presbyterian gave for the Thursday meal for the brew and more and more things happened it is so fun it is so good to be on mission not only for God but with God, hearing his voice, being led by him. Now, I don't, I don't know exactly what God's going to, what God's going to do with this whole meal thing. I know he's in it. And I'm sure he's writing a thousand stories a week. There's so many people we're connecting with. But what's exciting is just knowing that we're doing what God wants us to do. As I look out over this field, it's been plowed over. It was corn last year. It'll probably be corn again this year. Maybe soybeans. I'm not sure. 
but there's no weeds. It's good soil. I actually enjoyed walking across the field to get to this spot. It's good soil, and it's ready for seed. I encourage you to weed your life. Get rid of those, whatever of those 16 weeds that are in your life so that you can quiet yourself to hear God's voice. And then I encourage you to grab a star. <laughs> Do it often. And enjoy the thrill of being on mission for God and with God. Remember what Jesus said in John 15? We went over this last week. John 15, verse 7, if my words, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, <laughs> and it will be given you. Let's pray. Gracious God, you are here. You are present wherever we are. And so we stop. We take a breath. We appreciate your presence. And we receive from you. May we remain in you. And your words, your rhema, your speaking, your voice remain in us. And may you bear much fruit through us, fruit that will last. For your glory and our joy, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day.